Welcome to the Hoof and Fang Podcast. I'm Kurt Graves. And I'm Mathematics. Welcome to 2024. Yeah, 2024. The Hoof and Fang Podcast continues to exist. Yes, we've made it thus far. We've made it to 2024. <laughs> How was your break? It was good. It was pretty chill for the most part. Like, I mean, we talked about Christmas. That was nice and chill. And then New Year's was actually kind of a a little bit of a break than my norm like for the first time in i don't know 10 years i actually went somewhere for new year's (laughs) instead of just staying home and doing nothing so i actually went out with some friends and went dancing and i'm like reaping what i sowed from like (laughs) one night of being active when i'm typically such a couch potato now and i think i just had one of those lapses in judgment where i'm like i used to be able to like get out and dance and do a lot of stuff because I, I used to do it all the time, but I don't now. So right. me just getting up off of the couch is like exercise enough. But so I was like, oh, I'm 25. I can do that right. again. So I like danced my ass off for hours. And now I hours, feel you hours, said. hours, hours. Yes. Wow. And like at the time I was tired, but I was fine. But like now today, I want to die. Like every time I get up, both of my hips pop. I like I'm hobbling around like an old lady. It is it is really pathetic. So, but yeah, you had fun. I did. Okay, I did. I had a blast. But like next time, I have to do some yoga or something before I go. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. So, but yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Good. Yeah. Good. We just went to visit John's family. Our plans for Christmas got completely turned around. Yeah. Because my brother in law got COVID. That's so, us. our plan was to travel to my in laws for Christmas and mm-hmm. then be back the latter part of the week for new year's eve right. that got flipped we ended up staying for christmas going for new year's eve mm-hmm. uh and people who know me well know just how much i love when plans change at the last minute. yeah that's something you live for <laughs> it's one of my favorite things <laughs> uh so once i had mentally wrapped my head around all of that changing uh it was i mean it was great it was great to see my in-laws they're very nice um that's good I'm a very competitive game player, and so sometimes I have to separate myself from situations that could turn negative. Yeah. <laughs> mostly because of me. Yeah. Um, well, at least you're aware, though, you know? Like, well, you know. <laughs> I mean, in my head, it's not my fault that they're doing it wrong. Gotcha. But I am the one who will freak the fuck out. So, <laughs> yeah, if you ever want to play a board game with me, be ready to play like for real game. yeah I'm like we're doing it so this is the times that i wish that you were more of a gamer because there's actually a game that i think me and you would be really good at because i take it deathly serious okay. and nobody else does okay. it's this stupid game called overcooked where you're uh-huh. you're a chef it's like on a like you're two little cute characters and you have to prepare food a certain way and get it done at a certain time mm-hmm. otherwise you fail the mission I love this that just game. Sounds like working in a restaurant, dude. It's it's <laughs> it shouldn't be fun, but it's so fun. I okay. love it. But like, I take it four thousand times more seriously than everyone else I've ever played with. Like me, Alex can't play it with me because I take it too seriously. Oh, because he's sitting there like having fun and like throwing food at me, and I'm like, no, you need to be chopping this. I'm making the rice. Like, we need to get this done. Do you, are you not even looking at like what's up next? You're making this and this. Like, mm. we're gonna fail. And he's like, it's a game. I'm like, this is live. This like, video game is literally just working in a restaurant. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but it's, wow. it's like, I freaking love it. A little but, slice of life. Yeah. So like, yeah, if I could somehow get you to play, I bet we would have such a good time because if you're like, we're doing this, I'd be like, yes, chef. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, I would be like a hundred percent into the game. So yeah, that's the, that's the only time I've ever been like, I think Kurt level, like, no, we're being serious yeah. right now. We're playing the game. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I'm a competitive person, mm-hmm. but if I win, I want to win fair and square. Right. And I don't want any malarkey going on. Yeah. And like, that means everybody needs to pay attention. Mm-hmm. I get it. And my in-laws are chatty people. Yeah. They all like to talk. That would be rough during a board game, <laughs> especially if it's like times a factor mm-hmm. kind of thing. Like you need to respond fast. Mm-hmm. That would or be. Or just paying attention. Yeah. Like, in general. Yeah. It's, uh, they like to, they like to talk. They have the gift of gab, my in-laws and my husband, frankly. I was going to say that doesn't shock me because yeah. you're, John's the same way. Yeah. He's, he's a talker. So That's imagine it. just like seven Johns in a room, all having conversations back yeah. and forth over each other. While trying to play a game that mm-hmm. sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. yeah. 
So, <laughs> like I said, sometimes we just had to take ourselves out of the equation. Yeah. And go read a book. Yeah, that's fair. So, that's fair. That's what, that's what we did. <laughs> Ah, uh, so um, while we were on vacation, we had an audiobook come out. We did, yeah. Happy holidays to everybody who mm-hmm. picked up Ethan and Jag Destroy the World. I hope you're enjoying it. Me I had too. a blast recording it. Yes, I had such a good time listening to it. We, I mean, we we kind of talked about it in the last episode, but God, it's just it was so fun and like it was I think, fun. It, I think it was a good way to like end the year on like mm-hmm. just a positive note. It was. It was lighthearted. It's such a goofy story. Yeah. So and it's yeah. a standalone. So like yeah. you can just enjoy it as a little nugget, mm-hmm. and then move on with life. Yeah. So exactly. it's not like you have to. You're, nobody's waiting for the sequel or like the prequel or the right spinoff universe. Like yeah, it's this lovely story told from beginning to end, mm-hmm. uh, and really sort of in two parts. But it's like it's all there. Yeah. Exactly. It's all there. It's great fun. It's holiday appropriate. Mm-hmm. It'll be holiday appropriate again come Halloween. Yeah. It's, it has it's two the gift. seasons. Yeah, I was going to say it's the gift that keeps giving for sure. You can listen to it twice in one year. Right. Right. So, yeah, I hope uh, if you haven't picked it up, but you want to, mm. uh, the easiest way is to join our Patreon right. at the $10 level. Uh, and you will still, as of right now, get that audiobook as your perk of membership. Mm-hmm. If you wait too long, it rolls over to the next month. So right. don't I think you have until the 9th to uh, to pick that up. Cool. Um, otherwise... You can just get it for, through our online store. Mm-hmm. Go to hoofandfangpodcast.com and click store. Yep. And uh, it'll take you where you need to go. You can pick it up. Everything's delivered through Book Funnel. Yep. Super easy. So, yeah, it's out there. We hope mm-hmm. people are enjoying it. Um, and like we've said, and I've seen a few of this uh, already, like uh, people just talking about it online. But that for us is the best way you can help us reach new people because uh, because we're not going through Audible or other marketplaces like that. There's nowhere mm. to leave like a rating and a review like you normally should to help promote a book. Right. For us, it's just like telling friends and promoting it online and anything you can do this one, especially because it's, it's standalone. Mm-hmm. It's not going to scare away the people who want like the whole series to be ready to go in audio. Yeah. Uh, Cause we have, we've started a couple series and like, there's no telling whether or not we will continue them. Mm-hmm. Um, But like this one is like, it just is what it is. Just go get it. Yeah. Just go get it. Yeah. You don't have to chase this down later and be like, okay, book two, where's that? When's that happening? Nope. It's all self-contained. Right. So, so yeah. Uh, Anything else you want to say about that? No, just that I hope people like it. Yeah. It makes me happy. Same. Yeah. Yeah. Go get it. Yeah. (laughs) We've announced this technically already, but this Mm -hmm. is when we would usually talk about now what our January audiobook of the month is going to be. Uh, We ran an online poll through our Patreon and Mm -hmm. had, over a hundred responses. It was awesome. Uh, and the far and away most popular choice was three meant to be by MN Bennett. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there were some other also excellent choices that got about the same yeah. level of attention on the three other ones. But this right. one, like our listeners made it known. Yeah. This is the one they want first. It was we have cool. listened to our listeners. Mm-hmm. So uh, January 26th is when three meant to be will come out. Mm-hmm. Knock on wood, as long as everything goes to plan. Yeah. We are in cold and flu season. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say that now yes. while I'm healthy and everything is on schedule. Right. Let's just remember we are going into a lot of time. We're here in Wisconsin. We just spend it indoors with other yeah. humans mm-hmm. and it is so easy to get sick. So as long as everything goes to plan, January 26th is when that will come out. We will, of course, let you know if that changes. Mm-hmm. Uh, we will, of course, honor memberships if they happen to lapse before blah, 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 blah. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll make be, it right. We'll, we'll be make it right. totally fair if things go wonky. But right. hopefully January 26th. Yes. <laughs> when be, yeah. You'll see. <laughs> I've just been burned by this so many oh, times. I know. Like at this well, point in life, especially at this time of year, I'm yep. like, guys, remember. The human body can only do so much. Yeah. Yeah. And nobody wants to listen to an audiobook where the narrator was sick. I can't even imagine. Well, and like, there's just a, your whole job is your voice, is mm-hmm. your throat. So, like, if you have anything <laughs> going whole on. My job is my throat. That ah. sounds dirty. <laughs> so many jokes, but we'll, we'll okay, leave it alone. Moving on. But yeah. But yeah, if you, if you get even remotely sick, like, you're, you can't. The work. first thing to go is the voice, mm-hmm. even, even if it's just nasally. Like mm-hmm. again, nobody wants to listen to that. Yeah, you're um, stuffy and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've seen it happen to other narrators where like they try to pull it off and like, yeah, that the can't reviews be good. show it. Yeah, and like 
It's like halfway through the book, suddenly everyone's voice is different. <laughs> it's like, well, sorry, kind man. of, or yeah. not, or and people are just like, why did they record this while it was sick? Like, I'll tell you off air. There's a very popular one. But like really? the reviews are full of like this narrator was obviously sick. Why did they record oh, no. this book? Yikes! Yeah, yeah. so not good. So we shall not be doing that. Mm-hmm. If I get sick, I sleep until I'm not sick anymore. Yeah, do what you got to so, do. <laughs> yeah, just just a little peek behind the curtain of being an audiobook narrator, mm-hmm. and all the many emails I have to send to be like, well, things are going to be late now because it's not just yep. one thing; it's like a series of things that. It's all yeah. dominoes. Yep. And I don't have any breaks built into January at all. So. Oh, no, man. Okay. So we really, fingers are crossed. Wood has been knocked upon. Mm-hmm. And uh, I I'll bring will be a horseshoe. I don't know. <laughs> and staying away from people as best I can. Because, yeah, yeah. This, this January needs to be healthy January. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, the office will be a nice bubble. It like, better be. If I wake up, if you even bring with, illness here. I will not. I will not. Like, Alex is really good about telling me if anyone's been sick at his work. Okay. If I wake up feeling even slightly off, I'm like, not going. Like, yeah. I'm not messing this up. <laughs> so, yeah, I get it. So, for this episode, um, something that I kind of noticed, I think, last week when we were talking, or either on, on the air or maybe in passing with me and you were just hanging out in the office, you had mentioned something that I actually didn't know about you where you talked about how you were hired professionally to sing. And I was like, I didn't know that you did that. I have no recollection of this conversation. It was BT dubs. Obviously <laughs> like, it was like, I had no recollection of it. <laughs> but like I, it was like a passing comment and I was like, Oh, that's so funny. I didn't know that about you, which is hilarious because mm. we see each other every day. Yeah. We talk constantly, but there's still stuff. And you know, I do musical theater. You, right. Yeah. I've seen you in play. Right. So I wasn't like, oh, that's shocking. I was like, oh, I just didn't know that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I thought it'd be kind of fun for us to talk about four things that maybe we don't know about each other. And I'm sure people who are listening probably don't know either. Well, we'll find out. Yeah. This was a challenge. So yeah, I'm I gonna, had to really dig deep. I'm going to make mind. you go first. Okay. Your first one. So my first one. Um. And I, by the way, I'm really hoping that like we haven't taken totally different tacks on this. I know. Because mine no are kind telling. of like silly and niche. And oh, if you're yeah, like, mine are silly. Here's some really deep, dark secrets about me. <laughs> I'd be like, oops. Yeah, no, no. Mine are goofy. <laughs> and like I, try, I had to try to think of stuff that, like all the stuff that I think you don't know, is it like exciting things for me? <laughs> well, we'll find out. <laughs> It'll also be interesting to see if I don't actually know it. Yeah. Yeah, you probably do, but I'm I'm gonna ask and be okay. like, do you know about this? Okay, this one you probably don't know. I actually don't have any tonsils. I had like, them removed when I was like eight. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Say like you were born without them? No, I was like constantly sick as a kid, oh, so yeah. I had them taken out when I was like eight. But I had to stay in the hospital because like after I got them removed, I couldn't swallow anything. Like mm. it just I was messed up. So I was in the hospital for like a week after a routine tonsillectomy kind of thing, and it sucked but nice. yeah i don't have tonsils so i still fact. have my wisdom teeth i do too yeah they're yeah. just hanging out back there haven't come in have they been pressuring you to get to get them removed no in fact the last time i went to my dentist and they did the x-rays they were like everything looks really good but if anything starts to bother you let us know but right now they just look like they're just chilling and everything's fine every time i've gone to the dentist they're like you know, you're st- you, we should schedule you to get your wisdom teeth out. And I was like, oh, are they crooked or anything? They're like, no, they're fine. They grew in fine. But most adults just get them removed because they're hard to clean. I was like, how about I just make the effort? Wow. I don't want oral surgery. Yeah. That's like notoriously awful. Right. <laughs> Why would I volunteer right. that? But yeah, It is the plot of many a sitcom. Yeah, exactly. That somebody has gotten their wisdom teeth out and yeah. then they are ridiculous mm-hmm. and in a lot of pain. Yeah. I was like, no, I don't want bones coming out of my right. face. I'm fine. Right. Thank you. Just make right. sure to brush them. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, just super weird. Good one. Yeah. Okay. No what tonsils. about you? Yeah. I could not eat cold cheese until I was in my mid twenties. Really? Was it just like a texture? I like- don't know why. I yeah. It was a texture thing. It was a taste thing. I hated cold cheese. Interesting. If it was melted. Okay. Upon a pizza. Okay. So that was fine. Or something like that. Then it was okay. As long as it was hot and melted. Okay. But like just a like a take a slice of cheese out of the fridge, just absolutely not. It grossed me out. I thought it was disgusting. Oh, interesting. Yeah, but around my mid twenties, it changed, and I started to sample the cheeses, and I was like, "All right, (laughs) this isn't so bad." And now I love cheese. Yeah, not all cheeses, but I love you know. Yeah, it's still not like a snack that I think to reach for on a regular basis. Yeah, you know that's fair. Um, 
Except for these cheese whips that are at the store just down on the other side of where we are live. Those the, this like, is not interesting ones? to anybody on <laughs> like we will talk about it off <laughs> off of the podcast. Okay. <laughs> There's some really like, good cheese ki- whips cuz and they're local and they're like from a local farm and it's, everything is they're delicious. So that's Okay. Yeah, I've, those I think I'm going to make a dreams. note because I do actually want to know about that. <laughs> cheese local. Yes. Okay. <laughs> good. Yeah, after this I'm going to be like, "Okay, so where's this cheese? Cuz yes. I want that." Yes. Number 2. Okay. Did I ever tell you about my field school that I did in college going to police? Yes. Okay. Did I tell you about breaking something while I was there? No. Okay. So here's the thing. We had to go into the the best part of the entire trip. The thing I was looking the most forward to was going into this kick-ass underwater cave in Belize. And it's a, it's a very sacred Mayan area where they like, during the like, I want to say pre-classic, maybe I can't remember now. They um they had the really they had a really really bad drought and it was like the decline of the area. Like the the kingdom wasn't doing good and stuff. So they looked to their god of rain, who's also the god of death, and he lived in underwater because that's where the um like like the afterlife was in mm-hmm. Mayan mythology. So there was this cool cave that you had to swim into was it a cenote no it wasn't a cenote but it was uh it's kind of similar but like you had to swim through it and then there's a part of the cave that you can actually get out and walk around on and they would bring um ceremonial like pots that were full of things they also did sacrifices there so there was this cool like that's where the crystal maiden is if you've never Mm -hmm. it's just it's a cool skeleton of a young woman it's so cool i loved it um there's a, a skeletal remains of a young woman who was brought there for to be sacrificed she was and then her skeleton after you know she decomposed and stuff her skeleton was there and it got dripped on by um the cave water so she like crystallized so her skeleton is now like if you shine light on it it like sparkles but eventually she'll be completely covered up and you won't be able to Mm. see her anymore so like the window being able to see her remains is is finite which is awesome but so we're walking around we're all archaeology students and we had to take off our shoes to make sure we like kept everything intact. I slipped and broke a very old ceremonial Mayan bowl. It was a total accident, but it was one of those like the loudest noise in the quietest game. <laughs> <laughs> like I slipped, it broke, and it just got deathly quiet. <laughs> and the dude who was leading us through it was like, What was that? And I was like, Oh my god! I'm so sorry. Like, <laughs> and like, it, I was like horrified. Are you picturing your life in a Belize jail? <laughs> yeah, I was like, is this it? Are they going to send me home? Am uh, I allowed to be here anymore? So, I, yeah, I broke the damn pot, and then I swear, every time we tried to go back out to the excavation site that was not located near the cave, it would rain every <sighs> day, and I got blamed for it for the rest of the trip. Naturally. Yeah, because they're like, you broke the it damn thing. Like, Chalk's like, mad at you. There's no other explanation. Yeah. I was like, oh, bitch. but yeah, that was like one of the coolest and most embarrassing things that has ever happened to me because like the surrounding story, epic. But I'm a clumsy ass and I broke something like priceless wow. inside of this like very cool Mayan cave. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. It sucked. <laughs> yeah, are the broken remains still there? Yeah. So I just they like broke have them. to tell people about it. Yeah, they're going to be like, blah blah blah. This is like the ancient burial site and mm. stuff. And then some jackass American kid <laughs> <laughs> broke this slip pot. and broke it. Yeah. So yeah. Wow. It was well. You've made your mark on history. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's not in the best way, but yeah. it's there. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't throw that story around because I'm very much the villain in that story. A klutzy one, but I was like, yeah, sorry. American. You, you know this goes on the internet, right? Yeah, I know. It's fine. I mean, I was. It like was. You, you just told everybody. I was like twenty two. Okay, I mean, wow. I was like a kid. The things we do at twenty two. And it was a pure accident. Like I wasn't even being goofy. I just some klutzy. Mm. I just slipped. So, but it happened. Okay. Well, if you have any ancient and or precious pottery, I'm hold not, on to it. If yeah. Maz is changing shoes. <laughs> yeah, <don't> do <laughs> oh Lord. So I was just going to let you know, because I don't think I've talked about this with you or maybe often, but when I was in high school, I wanted to be a journalist. Really?
really? Yeah. Um, and I was the editor of my high school newspaper. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So that was sort of like the thing I thought I would do when I was younger. Nice. Uh, my aunt and uncle sort of uh, discouraged me from doing that because my uncle was a reporter for actually the Green Bay Press Gazette up here. Oh, cool. Uh, and they were like, don't you want to make money? And I was like, I guess. <laughs> so they're like, well, then don't do that. And I was like, oh. I, man, I but hate also, it when like, people do that. Like, it was the dawn of the internet. And so, uh, like, newspapers are kind of a thing still, but so not, really. not what they were before. Like, mm-hmm. to make your jo- your life, your living as a full-time reporter is almost impossible nowadays. Yeah, so, yeah it would be tough. tough. In, in some ways, it was, it was kind of good that I veered from that path and ended up doing this stuff yeah i guess it was meant to be but like that's something that i got a lot when i was growing up too because i wanted to be a paleontologist archaeologist and they're like what are you going to do with that i'm like Mm -hmm. i don't know i'm going to go to school and figure it out right i mean fast forward i ended up not doing it anyway but it's such a bummer thing to tell a kid like nothing makes money unless you like get very lucky or you get into like being a doctor or something but like but see the thing is some jobs do make money Mm -hmm. (laughs) like yeah welders Make money. Mm-hmm. Plumbers make money. Yeah. There are plenty of very practical and sensible jobs I could have chosen. For sure. Instead, I became an audiobook narrator. I'm still telling stories. Yeah. And that was the goal, I guess, mm-hmm. all along. So, yeah. So it all worked out. Yeah. I'm not doing anything remotely attached to what I was going to school for. <laughs> you create characters, which yeah. are both human and prehistoric animal. So I guess it so works. So you're using, your, you're using that knowledge. Yeah. All right, I'll take it. Mm-hmm. I'll take it. Yeah. Number three. Uh, number three, fun fact. Um, me and my sister are the only people in my family without a criminal record. Literally <laughs> everyone else has some type of infraction. All right. So there you go. Now, <laughs> criminal record begins at what level of sentencing? Like misdemeanor? Like speeding ticket uh like how far (laughs) but do we go before we call it a criminal record well i mean i i I, i've never even gotten a ticket like i'm I'm like never been in trouble whatsoever i don't think my sister has ever so like me and my sister are never never encountered the law in any type of capacity but every other member of my family like felony charges so like we are like the two nuggets and everyone else is like just wild. Yeah. So yeah, just, I mean, it ra- it's all benign stuff and everyone's fine. But like I was reflecting back and I was like, how the hell did we do that? Like how did we come from a yeah. family that like chronically got in trouble and then me and Seth just somehow just didn't go that that path. Hmm. But yeah. My number three factoid. Um, I may have mentioned it. I don't know. Have I ever told you that like my, my first non restaurant job was working for an outpatient mental health clinic? I think you've talked to me a little bit about it. Okay. We I don't think we've ever talked about it on the show. Well, that's the whole fact. Oh, okay, because <laughs> <laughs> there's so many things about that job I can't talk about because mm-hmm. they are protected by HIPAA. Right. Um, except for the fact that for about five years I worked at the front desk of an outpatient mental health clinic, learned a lot, mm-hmm. gained a lot of empathy, and developed a pretty dark sense of humor as a result. Oh ma- man, me too. Um. But that's how you get through it yeah. when you are regularly interacting with people who are suffering um, at many different levels. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I encountered that a tiny bit when I worked for nine one one, talking mm-hmm. to people who were going through a crisis, and they would call us needing help, or because they were like most of the time, I would deal with people who were like in the middle of having like very severe delusions. Right. So they're calling us asking for help that things that were not actually happening, mm-hmm. and it's. One, yeah, dark sense of humor for sure, just because that's how you protect your brain. But also it it really helped me understand a lot more of that because when you talk to somebody who really, really thinks these things are happening, it stops being like, I just don't understand why X, Y, Z and being like, oh my God, no, they really think like their life is falling apart right now. And all I want to do is try to help them navigate through it. So yeah, that it really, it really is sobering and- Mm -hmm. It did, it did the same thing. It helped me like empathize with that way more at that point in my life than before. Right. So. Well, and it made it so much more 
so so much easier for me when the time came to seek mental health treatment to yeah. like not have that stigma because mm-hmm. it's like I know what it I know what it is I know yeah. that like you can't see on somebody's face whether or not they need that kind of help yeah like every type of person gets that assistance mm-hmm. from doctors from therapists yeah so and and I've also seen it when people very well meaning people seemingly fully well adjusted people who are getting help also lose their battles with yeah. mental health issues and it's like uh, that to not have any judgment around that i think a lot of people still do mm-hmm. for me it's like i've seen it enough times to know that like people who seem fine who are getting help all it takes is like the opportunity and the motivation mm-hmm. and if those two things align it can it can happen yeah. so like I just, like I said, gained a lot of empathy, Mm -hmm. uh, which I think has been good for me in the long run and probably helps even a little bit with my job now Mm -hmm. uh, because I think being able to relate to people or uh, mind those depths because I get what we we call it angsty, but a lot of it it does have to do with like some pretty traumatizing mental health situations. (laughs) Right. Yeah. (laughs) Um, uh, That happened in these books. And so I I think that. That helped open me up to like other people's experiences and yeah. to feel for them instead of being scared of, of that situation or of them or of doing or saying the wrong thing. Cause like there's no right thing to say when somebody's going through something like that. You just mm-hmm. be present. Yeah. Help when you that's can. That's a big one. It's just sometimes you don't have the answer and that's I think hard to a hard pill to swallow is like mm. you sometimes you can't help. The only right. thing you can do is just, just be a body there with yeah. them and just kind of, be present and listen mm-hmm. and do what you can. But right. yeah, no understanding that you, especially cause I'm, I'm one of those people that like I'm a fixer in a crisis kind of thing where I'm like, tell me what to do to fix it. Or have you tried X, Y, and Z? Like I think before I got the, you know, had that interaction with people at nine one one, I was that person that was like, Oh, have you tried yoga or like walking right. outside more? You know, like, mm-hmm. no, that doesn't help. That's not a cure all. Like, don't don't offer platitudes. Just be like, that sucks, and I'm right here. Right. That's sometimes yeah. the best thing you can do. Exactly. So, number four. Number four final, for me. My final, final thing. Final secrets revealed. Yes. So, you know I'm scared of spiders. Uh-huh. That's yeah, obvious. Cause, that. Yeah, because you've helped me with them in the office mm-hmm. before, like a good friend. But I'm also a little scared of horses. Huh. Yeah. Well, they are very large. Yeah. They could, they can really hurt you yeah so when i was little i used to take horseback riding lessons because I, I loved horses um until i was around them and horses can pick up if you're nervous they can sense that so if mm-hmm. you're nervous it makes them nervous and it was just a cycle right and i like these horses would pick up on this fact that this little worm child is near them and is uncomfortable so they would like push me down and push me out of the way because they'd be like, Ugh, get away from me and like use their nose to just like shove me down and stuff. And so I just never got over it. So even now when I'm around them, I'm like, that horse is going to push me. <laughs> <laughs> like I just, they're big and they're very yeah. smart and they scare me a little bit. So I think they're beautiful. I just don't mm-hmm. like to be near them. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. So just weird thing. Don't fuck around with horses. No. Like they really, yeah. Yeah. They can hurt you. They, they are for the most part, like gentle loving creatures but yeah they're super sweet but they are very large mm-hmm. and those hooves can harm yeah. someone very easily yeah for very sure very easily yeah yeah Sorry, cool. yeah. Cool. okay yeah no that one makes sense <laughs> okay i was like i always feel goofy about that because they're like you said they're sweet and they've got those mm-hmm. big doe eyes you know like they're such cool animals and i'm like no 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 I want to right. stay on the other side of the fence. Right. I don't want to get near it. Right. Like I'll pet it or something, but I don't want to be super close to it. Right. So. Well, I mean, I think cows are adorable, but like mm-hmm. I'd want to make sure I wasn't somewhere where they could like accidentally lay down on me. Yeah. You know, or like, like, well, they can kick. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. But never get behind a cow regardless of how cute you think they are. Yeah. That is, so yeah. yeah. They, could, they can mess you up, yeah, man. Animals, big, animals. big hooved animals. <laughs> I mean, even, even animals we love like cats and dogs, they oh, can yeah. lash out if, mm-hmm. if they, feel afraid or yeah you know like gotta be careful 
I got a few face scratches just picking up our boys from my parents' house yesterday. They just get too wily. They get so excited. <laughs> yeah. And Bodhi was like, let me touch your face. And I was like, buddy, no, you have you, claws. I, I can't let you do you, that. Yeah. Your fingernails are actual claws. Yes. <laughs> He just love you. Yeah, he really face. put like, the wild eyes. And the, I'm gonna touch your face. I can picture it yeah. on his face. Yeah, yeah, that that happened. My final one, and I may, maybe I've mentioned this before, and I don't know how this is gonna play on the internet, but I wanted to do at least one thing that I was like, a thing I can't stand. Okay. That I don't know. I that I know is is not a popular opinion. Okay. I cannot stand the actor Will Ferrell. Really? Just n- don't jive with his sense of humor and he stuff? He is not, to me, mm-hmm. he is not funny. He is not charming. I don't think he's talented. I don't think he can play any character besides the goofy version of himself <laughs> that he plays in everything. Mm-hmm. And I am not charmed by it. I am not entertained by it. I can't stand the man. That's fair. That's and there fair. are a lot of movies that mm-hmm. I can't enjoy because he is very prevalent in that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I get it. Well, I think you're right. He does play kind of the same character in every movie. So if you're a fan of that, it's great. But if you're like, nope, nope. that's it. That's his range yeah. is that. And he's so. tried to play serious, too. Has he? Uh, yeah, he did the... I think it was called Stranger Than Fiction. Emma Thompson played... Like oh, the voice yeah. of God in that one. And That's he was right. like, yeah. He was like a character of a story or yeah, something. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And like, so that was like, I think his serious turn. And even that, I was like, this guy's bad at acting. In so my bad. opinion, That's I don't enjoy him. I think I've only ever seen him in goofy stuff. And I think, although to be fair, I haven't seen any of his stuff since the God 2010s. Like, I think the last thing I saw was maybe Talladega Nights. Mm. And I thought it was funny, but this, that was years ago. So I don't know if it's, Age because I've definitely rewatched something that I thought was hilarious before, sure. and I was like, "Oh, I was an idiot." So I don't know. I I'm probably still. And I do some so. like I enjoy satire. I enjoy weird, funny humor. Like, right? It's not that other people can't achieve that for me, but for with him, I just, just it's don't not get it, there. Yeah. I don't get the appeal. And like people who are professional comedians and professional comedy writers will mm-hmm. talk about how great he is and what a chameleon he is, and I'm just like. I don't see it, guys. I see the exact same thing every time, and it's yeah. not funny. That's fair. To me. It's not funny to me. This Clearly, is I am in the minority because yeah. he's very popular. I was going to say. A lot of people love him. Yeah, this is going to be the thing that like blows us up online. They're going to be like, how dare you? <laughs> I'm just saying there's no such thing as good and bad. Yeah, I just, just don't like him. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So... If, you, if you're about to recommend a Will Ferrell movie to me, if you're thinking, wait, 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 has he seen this one? Because he's really good in that. I'm just letting you know, it's not worth your time to send me a message. Yeah. Just, I've actually, I've seen a lot of Will Ferrell movies. Mm-hmm. I just saw him in the Barbie movie. I loved the Barbie movie. I forgot he was in that. I yeah. couldn't stand him in the Barbie movie. I was mm-hmm. like, why couldn't they have gotten somebody else? Yeah. Thankfully, he's not in much of it. Yeah. He's, it's a very bit part. So it I doesn't think. ruin it for me. Mm-hmm. Fair. Same guy. He's just yeah. playing the same guy. Yeah. He. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Because he he basically plays the same type of character on The Office too. He's he's in like three episodes on The Office, and he's playing that guy basically. That's it's his whole shtick, and yeah. God bless him. He's a millionaire. I he mean, doesn't need right? my approval. Yeah, for sure. He's, he's doing he's just fine. High. Yeah. But I will not. I have not been swayed, and probably probably shan't. That's fair. That's fair. There we go. That's my little little bit of hate sprinkling into the world. <laughs> I can't think if I have an actor who I, I can't stand. At least not, nothing that comes off the top of my head. No. But I'm sure I've got one. He really is my kryptonite. Yeah, I just, just I cannot just, stand him. I just don't understand the appeal. Yeah. I just don't get it. Well, so those are four things that uh, you may or may not have known about each of us. Let mm-hmm. us know what you think of our little quirks and or stories in the comments. Yeah. Uh, and uh, now it's time to talk to somebody far more interesting. I yes. <laughs> they are very interesting. This is uh, this week we are talking to the author duo K.A. American. Uh, K.A. American is a duo of queer writers who don't believe in following the well-trodden path. In their books, you can dip your toe into dangerous romance with mafiosi, outlaw bikers, and bad boys, all from the safety of your sofa. And when we say bad boys, we mean 
bad, bad boys. Like, yes. These are some bad guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, they get dark and scary. Um, they love the weird and wonderful stepping out of the box and bending stereotypes, both in life and in fiction. Here is our chat with K.A. American. Welcome to the Hook and Fang Podcast. With us today, we have the author K.A. American, also known as Kat and Agnes. Hello. Hi. It's so lovely <laughs> to be able Kat. to speak with you guys. <laughs> yeah, same here. Um, yes, it's pretty exciting. We don't uh, often do those. So <laughs> Good. Now, for those who are hearing your accents and wondering, where are those people from? Where are you guys? Uh, we are originally from Poland currently living in the uk yes so yeah lovely Both Polish. <laughs> lovely uh well i am partially excited to get to talk to you guys because i have gotten to work with you before in the past yes. so it's always nice yes. to reconnect with authors who i've been able <laughs> to work with in the past and hopefully in the future someday mm-hmm. uh, and then <laughs> you as you know them as well right yeah, you got yeah. To hang out with them yeah so i back in like 2018 no no more than that like maybe 17 16, 17, I was able to inter- uh, interview both of them for my old podcast, Top to Bottom, which Aww. I, yeah, I did with Jess. So <laughs> it's good to be able to talk to you guys again. I'm so excited. <laughs> Reunited. Yeah. To see what's changed. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, God, it's right? Been, yeah. It's been, it feels like a lifetime between being able to like <laughs> yes. talking to you now yes. and back then. So it's crazy. Why? Mm. What happened? Oh, you know. I mean, a lot of good books happened. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> we moved. We got the cat. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have the same lives. I also moved and got some cats. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That's all that's changed. That's all that's, that's happened it. Yeah. in the intervening years. Nothing else of import has happened. Nothing else. Nothing Let's else. Forget everything else. <laughs> um, well, for those who aren't familiar with you, and actually, I don't even know this story. Like, how did you guys get started? Um, like, how did you find your your way into being authors? Have you always written together? When did you come together as authors? What's your origin story? Oh, our origin it's, story. It's complicated. It, it, yeah, there's several levels to it. But uh, we have actually written together yes. since I was maybe 17. So, like, Something like that. Uh, 15 years, I think. Mm. Wow. Or even a bit more. Uh, so, we have come together as an authorship years ago and we kind of developed a voice Mm. together and I think that's why it meshes so well Mm. because uh, we're not just like two people who do their own thing but then sometimes co-write we just developed writing together and we just met as friends uh, years ago in like a friend group where we were like um, collecting dolls we had had very niche hobbies yes lots of um, niche hobbies that, that we shared and that's how we met basically through internet forums yeah. About dolls and about gothic lolitas. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and we, uh, yeah, we were, were both into anime yeah. and met up with friends at conventions and things like that. And just mm. one time we were met at someone's house party and we just clicked. Overnight, mm. we basically came up with a book we want to write together because we already wrote a few things with like other people or alone. I wrote some fan fiction and I just had this idea and I got, um, really gave more ideas mm. towards my story. And by Can- the time uh, we got home after the party, we started writing together. And yes. It was our stories. Because instead. it was this very strange situation. It was a New Year's party. <laughs> uh, because we kind of knew each other before that, but we weren't close. It was just uh, an acquaintance because we lived in, in different cities. Mm. Um, three hours, trains right apart, more or less. Um and um, at this party, we all of a sudden started talking about writing because we were doing that for fun. Um, there was no plans of, of publishing anything at that point, um, anything serious like that. And um, yeah, we, we just spent the whole New Year's party um, plotting, a, <laughs> plotting a book. <laughs> and then uh, we wrote for uh, several years as a hobby, just mm-hmm. onto like online forums and things like that after People said they wanted to read it because Mm. first we just wrote for each other, just for fun. And And some friends were reading it. And that was still in Polish. Mm. And so from there, we we got to a point quite a few years later where 
we were uh, finishing university, getting jobs, mm. uh, getting jobs we hated, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> starting to talk seriously. And we had a, a, a very serious conversation of, hey, I want to do this for real or I have to quit mm. because I will either have to spend all my time mm. doing a different profession to get anywhere with it. Or I am willing to give it even like five years mm -hmm. to become a professional, but we will have to set everything else apart, uh, everything else aside and completely focus on this. And after that tumultuous conversation, we decided, yes, we are both on the same, because that's the very important thing that mm -hmm. we both needed to be on the same page, not just creatively, but are we both yeah. serious about it for, you know, money and making it a business and she did like that. skip yeah. a very important bit though, <laughs> yes. because uh, we we kept writing in polish for fun and we kind of got popular on, online uh on kind of polish websites with stories and things like this with free stories and um her sister bet us that we can't write in english And we decided to um, take and, that and bet. And that we can't write, uh, <laughs> because I was saying, oh, we write so fast. And she was uh, saying how, well, you can't write a story in two weeks. You were like, bet us. And she bet us that she'll pay for the editing if we do it in two weeks in English. Mm. And uh, it was actually just her form of encouraging. And yeah. since then, she's been like our biggest champion and um, helped us set up a company in the mm. UK and things like that. So, uh, yeah, she was really the one to push yeah. us towards English because <laughs> we were a bit intimidated at that mm. time. Like, because I can speak, but can I actually get into, uh, you know, metaphors and everything in English? Mm. And it was a bit intimidating to swap. And, and yeah, we no, it would be there. difficult to swap back, honestly. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I've been at this yeah. juncture. For so many years, yeah. Right. Oh, that's an awesome story about your sister, though. Yeah, I don't. Really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, she is amazing. When my family says stuff to me about my work, none of it inspires me to go do more work. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Neither does my family, to be honest. Right? <laughs> I mean, it's not like they aren't encouraging. Yeah. They just don't get it at all. They don't get so. it. That's the thing. They <laughs> just don't get it. <laughs> Yeah. It's really funny because, you know, it's explicit gay romance, but my dad will be like, oh, can you sign a book for my cousin? I'm like, I mean, does he know? It's like, yeah, yeah, let's yeah. Like, fine. Let's He's fine. into it. Well, it, it, it. It's mostly because um, it, it's some older person who probably wouldn't want this kind of content in general, like any erotic content from their niece or something. <laughs> But since they can't read it anyway, it doesn't matter. So sweet. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. I, for me, it's just that uh, my parents are so proud mm -hmm. that they, yeah. they want to champion me. Well, and your dad's <laughs> on your nice. TikToks a lot too, right? Doesn't he like make guest appearances sometimes? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and he, oh, every time I go to Poland to visit, uh, he's like, oh, Kat, can we make a TikTok? <laughs> Oh, I've created a monster. He's very enthusiastic and he likes to be on camera. That's amazing. I love that. Yeah, it always seems like he's really digging it. Like the, I think the last one I saw was him like dancing. And I was like, what a cool dad. That's so great. <laughs> so the book that you guys had to write in a week, did you end up publish it? Like, did you craft it and did you actually publish yes, it? Or was we it, did. it, it really? Was, it was a novella. Okay. Uh, so 20,000 words, maybe? something like that. Uh, But that was kind of the point that it would be a finished thing yeah. in English. Yeah. So, mm. Yeah. It's no longer on sale because um, it's not good enough. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's fair. The interesting thing. That's the interesting thing that it doesn't matter mm -hmm. if yeah. now I think it's not good mm. enough because it's about doing the thing. Yes. yes. It doesn't matter. You can correct it later. You can unpublish it. Mm. But if you don't start somewhere and wait until things are perfect, mm. you'll get nowhere. Because mm. you are never perfect because you always improve if yes. you actually uh, engage with something. The goalpost always moves, mm. yeah. So, uh, and it was such a good process to go mm -hmm. through uh, an editor who now I think was inept, but like, you know, at that level of our uh, English and our mm -hmm. uh, writing, it was lots of helpful mm -hmm. things, lots of helpful tips. Yeah. And you could really develop quite quickly because you had to focus because it's getting published and mm -hmm. you're doing it. And uh, I think... Uh, That, that push that to really to publish it, not to just like, oh, write a story and maybe maybe like put it somewhere online or not, mm -hmm. what was uh, a really great 
catalyst yeah. to, uh, for our writing. Yeah, yeah, because it, it really gave us this confidence that we could um, try this for real, and that's where we actually had to have that conversation that Kat mentioned, mm-hmm. where we needed to decide if we want to pursue this or not. Um, mm. because I was finishing my university. You were kind of stuck in a job you didn't want, and um, yeah. because I I did fine art and I wanted to be an illustrator, and now it's art is still my hobby. But I knew that if I wanted to develop something serious, I need to give it my all. Mm. And when we decided to do writing, I agreed that I just put everything for my painting and illustration in in the closet and decided to just do this because. And spent all my free time reading craft books, uh, learning about other books, learning about publishing, mm. the industry, and just taking it seriously. And you cannot do five things at once. No. Yeah. I could afford to learn that lesson. Yeah, I was about to say, uh, <laughs> we are yeah. super guilty of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doing so many things at once. Because it's fun. You have many yes. hobbies and interests. Mm-hmm. But uh, that, that focus time to really, mm-hmm. to even to allow yourself to just focus on one thing because sometimes you you kind of try to do many things because oh you like them all but actually being able to mm-hmm. to focus on one thing uh, can yield the most uh, advantage in the shortest mm. time but also it was we both recognized it was a good time for this mm-hmm. because kindle was coming in uh, we had no dependence yes. we as long as we could uh, both do a part-time job and uh, do I mean, uh, every, every all the other time that we had, we would write or sleep. Yes, <laughs> those two things. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. We, that was the one time when we could actually do that. So take that risk. So we gave each other a few years, a fixed amount, and um, just just tried, which fortunately succeeded. <laughs> That's incredible. But I mean, so, of all the yeah. a, a good time mm-hmm. of all the people we've talked with, this I feel like this is the first time I'm hearing this particular story mm-hmm. of. <laughs> We have a goal. We're giving ourselves a deadline. Yeah. And we're setting everything else she, aside to achieve this goal. Into, yeah. Um, Self help books at the time. Oh, I yes. think that's where it came from I, that I we decided I'm, to try. I'm not ashamed no. of self help books. <laughs> well, it obviously not works. Not the 5 a.m. club anymore, but no. <laughs> no. Because oh, God. we would literally, would, we work different shifts. Yeah. So I would, uh, she would get up at 10, I believe, uh, yeah, go to like, work. Mm-hmm. For a few hours, then go back and go to sleep. I would go to sleep at like 4 p.m., mm. take like a four-hour nap. Yeah. She'd come back from work at 8, because mm. we live together. And uh, we'd start writing about 9 and finish at like 4 a.m. And then I'd or go later. to sleep. And it was like, it was... Whoa. That's it was intense. It was a bit extreme, yes. But we were doing everything just to spend that time together mm. in writing. And because we worked different shifts, if we didn't arrange our time that way mm. uh, to be sleeping when the other is at work uh, then then we wouldn't be able to produce mm. as much and yeah we just wanted to really mm-hmm. can you talk about your process a little bit because so you two actually write together in real yeah, time yes yes, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. yes. um Basically, we write in one document. So usually it's on Google Docs or something like that. Uh, Occasionally, it's just a Word document if we are somewhere that doesn't have the internet. Um, And um, we we just write a few paragraphs each. And the other one is looking at the screen, making revisions, suggestions, um, so that it merges nicely as one text. Um, And obviously, before that, we do lots of brainstorming. Um, currently working on a new project that's, um, I guess, fantasy. Yes, you could but say. We, we like to be spontaneous, but yeah. we also heavily uh, plot because there's two of us, mm. so we can't uh, like when when we jump into an actual chapter, we have to know what's happening because you know there's surprises in dialogue, there's surprises in very rarely it's like I want to take it somewhere really mm-hmm. different, and we have to replot, mm-hmm. but we have to agree on where we're both going or the chapter would meander so and i know some people write like that that they just go chapter by chapter spontaneously um and for example we we did one collaboration where we had kind of a rough plan but then the person working with us would just go a different direction a bit because they had a new idea and we had to adjust but we actually do prefer um sharing ideas as 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 we work because 
Uh, I don't know. It just works better for us. I I, but, I need to know where I'm going. But mm. also, technically, it could make things faster to write like mm. at the same time two different chapters. But it's not the same because we usually take one main character each and then share the side characters. And if you have, if if either of us has an idea for like a line of dialogue or something, we'll, we'll merge so that it's you know, uh, so that it flows together. But basically, uh, we do like to have the surprise of the dialogue or how someone else will describe something. And then you have inspiration. It's also very motivating because you're not just sitting there looking at the wall, thinking what's for dinner, because you, you have to. You have to write the next paragraph because that person is waiting. Sitting there waiting for you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so it's motivating. And, and every now and then it's like, I got you there <laughs> so yeah it's uh it's, it's lots of fun that way mm. and we first we, we plot but we leave lots of room for spontaneity but we do really heavily plot the main outline of the of the books yeah yes i mean i would say that 70 percent of the time there is one major change as we write <laughs> um around the three, when we reach the three quarters of the book more or less mm. a lot of the time we um, we are with the characters and obviously we keep thinking about the plot. Um, so very often we get a new, better idea for uh, how the story should resolve. Um, Our side characters have yes. emerged that could have an interesting role. Mm-hmm. Or we're writing and it feels like, wait, this isn't fun enough. This isn't interesting enough. How can we ramp up the stakes? How can we make it more dramatic, more interesting, more funny? Uh, those kind of things and do you guys tend to agree when those things are happening like do you agree as a unit like oh this isn't we need more excitement in this part you've never you don't have to like convince the other person (laughs) oftentimes it can be frustrating Mm -hmm. it can be whoever brings this up yes is like you know i don't want to mention it but i don't think this is good enough and the other person might feel frustrated yeah. because we were supposed to be writing this, but deep down, you usually know they're right. Yes, <laughs> you just have to adjust your expectations. So it's like yeah. it can be feel like hurtful because you really wanted this scene, but you can see it's not hmm. sensible for this character to do X, Y, Z. Mm-hmm. So it's usually we've had very few fights where we really wanted to go different directions. Yeah. And we do have kind of this rule that maybe helps us work as a partnership that we cannot be writing something until we're both happy with it. Yeah. So if we are both going different directions, we have to come up with a third one Mm -hmm. that works for both of us. We cannot be, there is no compromise that is like a creative compromise. Uh, I don't know if I'm making sense that it no, that makes sense. Uh, has to be something that we're both happy with. Yes. We cannot, uh, it's not just like, a, oh, I cannot put out a subpar product. Mm-hmm. It's just the, it's like my heart is in there. So I have mm-hmm. to be uh, happy, with happy with the book. What's there, yeah. yes. And I'm, I, I, then either, um, either of us has to let go of an idea that they had, but we have to come up with a third one that's mm-hmm. better until we're both happy. And sometimes it can be really frustrating. We yeah. need to go for a walk. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> burn that yeah, energy. Burn, burn that anger off mm-hmm. and then, you know, come up with something better than that works for both of us. Uh, but yeah, we, we rarely actually, I think we have a very similar sensibility mm-hmm. and that's what helps us uh, write comedy or write the dialogues uh, that, uh, we can we can do things that we're both happy with mm-hmm. quite easily yeah yeah that's that's really amazing and i like i've been following <laughs> both of you in your writing journey for a hot minute so i remember you posted one of your brainstorming sessions you had all of these like posted notes everywhere and you were like yeah. figuring yeah. out the ending of things and i was like yeah. that's amazing and i remember i tried to do that and i was like i just confused myself more so y'all have oh, no. the most unique brains <laughs> I was like, how are they keeping think, up with this? It's so cool. But yeah. I guess because everyone's brain works differently. Yeah. So our process will not work for everyone. I mean, yeah. I think for most people it would be annoying for some reason because they, they just like doing something different. Mm-hmm. Um, we like to be quite structured um, mm-hmm. most of the time and, and then allow ourselves leeway. When and we used to not up. be. We used yeah. to our, our the first stories we wrote back in Polish. They were just chapter by chapter, we were whatever just popped up yeah. in, in our heads. But 
I can see sadly that they're just that when there's a goal to the story that you know the character arc, you know where the characters are heading, where the story is heading, you can create a, a more interesting story uh, and a more concise story. So uh, and obviously yeah. you can do that also uh, just pantsing, but then you often you have to end go up back. Mm-hmm. you often That's, end up having to adjust things or cut, and I hate cutting text. And I was yeah. gonna say I would prefer <laughs> to spend more time plotting than mm-hmm. editing. Yes, I, I hate <laughs> editing. I hate editing. I'm right there with you, and like I hate and editing, so, yeah. and I still pant. Like I, I'll. I'll wing uh, myself through a chapter because I just like the direction it's going in. And then I have to backtrack yeah. and I, I keep doing it to myself. And you'd think I'd like go back at this point and be like, okay, if I plot it, I can just skip all of this. But I don't know if I'll yeah. ever learn that lesson. I, I feel that for some people, it's it's hard to just sit down and come up with a plot. Yeah. Just, just staring at a page and making notes. Mm-hmm. It needs to be more organic. I think it helps, again, that there's two of us because... Yeah. Sometimes her brain will be like, no, I don't want to do this serious thing. And I'll be pulling her in. No, look, this is the structure. Mm -hmm. No, no, I wrote it down. Look at it. Look at it. I'm very distractible. (laughs) So so it helps that there's two of us. So there's always that spontaneous element Mm -hmm. as well. So it's not just me or her sitting and trying to come up what's next. We brainstorm, we brainstorm, and then we get a, a step ahead each time. And that's that's very helpful again because it's just more entertaining when someone else, you know, you have someone to. We are both each other's sounding boards, basically. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I love that. Me too. I need one of those. Yeah, I mean, I I have <laughs> one kind of like with Jess, but she does she doesn't sit next to me and keep me right. in line, so that's why I'm able to just throw myself into nonsense plot holes that she has to go back oh, later no. and be like, "What did you do?" So yeah, I need oh. I need to get her to move here and sit next to me when I write. I think maybe I can That'll be more work. productive. <laughs> uh, cats can have this very judgmental face. Yeah, yes. there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am curious um, because you guys, the one book I've done with you had a hint of uh, like paranormal to it, and I know you okay. have some other series that are paranormal and fantasy focused, but not all of your work is that. Mm-hmm. So what would you say is like the theme that connects all of your work or is there one? We uh, enjoy strange characters, characters that live outside of the norm in some way. Uh, I think there is very few books in our repertoire that uh, does not feature this element. We mostly write dark romans, uh, but even the ones that are not dark romans usually have some kind of strangeness, like a very weird fetish that is just like uh, out there. We like to explore people that are different, that are rebels or outsiders. And that doesn't always mean dark Mm. romance, but it does tie into them being kind of on the outside oftentimes. I think maybe there is some kind of connection with us both being immigrants. So we kind of stepped outside our own Society. I mean, let's face it. We were we were outside. <laughs> we were outside before we were <laughs> <so>. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we we were weirdos. I remember when I first saw her. Um, I I didn't know how she looked like, and um, and you thought, wow, that's so weird. No, she, she she organized a kind of weekend party at her parents' home where she still lived, and um, my friend was going, and he invited me over, and. We both went and um, we were in this tiny Polish town, um, very conservative and all that. And uh, there she is in uh, <laughs> gothic Lolita frocks. <laughs> <laughs> she looked like um, like someone from a different dimension in this particular place. I, I just didn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and you guys mentioned but, that. But yeah, and that's kind of ties back into characters. Mm, yeah. I like to write about people who stand up against the standards, but not always in a way that they're leaders or changing society. Mm. They will often just do their own thing, whatever it is. If it's murdering people <laughs> or if it's having some weird fetish mm. and, and just going with it, it's just very entertaining to me to write about characters that are different. And that can mean many things. And it doesn't always mean dark romance, but for us, it always it, it often does. Yeah. Yes. And we also, I think, enjoy um, books that take some concept quite far. Mm-hmm. 
So, for example, one of our books, one of the characters ends up um, transforming into a monster and um, eating for people uh, who are obviously villains of the story. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I didn't want to just let them live because that would be <laughs> <laughs> They have to pay. Well, and I, you mentioned at the beginning of the interview that you guys you watched a lot of anime, and I also know that you guys are big gaming nerds um, because yes. one of the series that one of the video game series I adore, which I know you fell in love with, uh, in love with as well, was uh, Red Dead Redemption Two, and you had oh, yes. you wrote a whole duology after playing that game. So I yes. like. I love that. Like, I, I wanted to, like, talk to you guys about games, and I promise I won't take up too much time about it. But, oh, no, don't worry. Like, I, I can talk about games forever, and I can talk about the Western. Forever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's funny because I never was really into Westerns before. Mm-hmm. I, especially not being American, I, I didn't understand the genre. Yes. I didn't understand uh, how the world worked in that time in that part of the world but after Red Dead Redemption we went on such a massive research binge yeah. and we spent seven months just on these two books researching everything writing them and it was such an amazing time we want to do more westerns in the future but it's interesting how sometimes something can can just be this trigger for you to find a whole new genre mm-hmm. that interests you yeah. because um I don't know if you know but in Europe uh, there is the, ver- the most popular Western series is, uh, I think, Vinatou. Um, it's based on books by Carol May, uh, and those are German books. And um, yeah, it's it's a it's a whole series of movies, and my dad used to love them, and I felt they were stale and boring. <laughs> um, whenever he wanted me to watch a Western with him, and that's how I perceived Westerns as a genre that they are just not for me, mm-hmm. <laughs> right. basically. But then I. And that was the first game I played, actually, as an adult. And because it's really? a game, it's so immersive yes. in the world. Yeah. So I, I had kind of a... I was in a bad mood for a while, and I saw this billboard with Arthur Morgan <laughs> from Red Dead Redemption, and I thought, I want... I want to check this out. Yeah. Um, looks interesting. And, and we talked each other into it by, by talking about how, well, it won't be a waste of time. It's, it's, <laughs> games are such an interesting genre now. <laughs> and, you know, this one has such a story. It's like, it's like reading a book, but yes. you're in it. I mean, like, oh. And it so <laughs> happened that her sister just had a baby, so she wasn't using her console, so we borrowed it. And I don't remember borrowing. I remember just the next day we went to the store and bought the console. I mean, we first <laughs> borrowed it, and then we bought the console. So, um, but yeah, we started playing, and that's that's how it started for us. Yes, but uh, it was, and it, and it was a good choice in terms of also mm-hmm. storytelling. Mm-hmm. I think there's several games out now, now that uh, can be just just as amazing as books or TV shows, or even more so because they're immersive. And I feel uh, playing Red Dead Redemption for two hundred hours helped me understand uh, the language the slang uh, i could i felt so immersed i could then easily slide into a language of mm-hmm. the western so it was fantastic it's definitely. very strange because obviously we don't speak the way the western is written you don't uh, speak or, ye or, old or, cowboy <laughs> yeah or, or have any context. Yeehaw. So sometimes language. we do say to each other oh hello part. yeah sometimes but, <laughs> and, and from time to time i will open the western like right now, and um, I, I will be looking at the page. Like, Did I write that? It's so strange because I don't usually talk like that or write like that. Yeah, yeah. It, it's quite immersive that way. Do you guys have other games that have inspired you? Because I, I think when we talked a couple yes. of years ago, you were talking about The Witcher as well, and I know you've got some cool folklore series out I was there. Say, so. It could be any inspiration. It doesn't have to be games. We well, talk okay, about something I'm besides sorry. Gaming. I'm sorry. <laughs> Then just kidding. I find that for us, we are very visual, both of us. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the time, what does inspire us, either movies or video games or a picture, uh, that kind of triggers this chain of events that ends up uh, in, a, in a book. Mm. Um, but yeah, Witcher, definitely. Uh, I think it's also that if you write all day, oftentimes you don't want to read a book after 10 hours of editing. Mm-hmm. So for me, uh, going to see a movie or, or just binging a TV show is, is 
restful in that mm-hmm. way while still engaging my story brain. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I really and the same goes for gaming. That it's very um like you still get to enjoy a good story, but you're not watching mm-hmm. words, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And uh, right now the mania is um let's say the word. Free. Let's say the word. Yeah. <laughs> we actually we actually saw two of the actors at uh, the Birmingham Comic Con yesterday. Oh yes. amazing. <laughs> Who did you get to meet? <laughs> we went especially to the Comic Con just to see those two actors. That's yeah. awesome. And it was a lot of fun. They they were really nice. So Oh was and a great we also experience. we also got to see the Actor for um, Roger uh, Clark, uh, yeah, for yes, Red uh, for Redemption. Red Dead Redemption. Oh, and amazing! Trey Baker from Last of Us, but yeah, also the does Joel and mm-hmm. uh, Roger does. Oh, that's awesome! I'm very jealous. Morgan. That's epic. Yeah. And they, they were on a panel together. Oh, it was mm-hmm. it was lots of fun. But uh, yeah, we also go to events to be inspired. Mm-hmm. I sometimes feel like I'm too much of a hermit, and mm-hmm. that can be a problem because you know how can you write about people if you don't know people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So I do try to put myself out there and go places even just to, even if I'm wallflowering, just to watch people and and listen to them and uh, interpret how they act and be in places that I can then use as inspiration. It's also important not to just watch TV all day. (laughs) Yeah, but uh, Baldur's Gate specifically kind of... um kicked off uh, this fantasy book that uh, we are preparing to write. Because we wanted to write fantasy for we, Yeah, we had time. a plan, but uh, while we were gaming, we came up with a modified idea. Um, and um, yeah, that's going to be the new book. That's basically. So we, we're basically, as, as usual, breaking our plans of what Always. we were supposed to write. <laughs> and uh, we're jumping into fantasy now. And it's frustrating because you kind of know what your brand is what you could sell better Mm -hmm. but your heart always follows Mm -hmm. creatively where where you just feel like right now and you always hope that maybe the western will be my best Mm -hmm. life and now you think like maybe the fantasy will be my best life you never know you never know what will you know uh, be most popular so you might as well enjoy your life (laughs) if there was somebody out there listening who has never read your work what would you want Mm -hmm. them to read first if they enjoy historicals, then the Western. Yeah. Because I am so proud of the, of those two books, of this duology. I feel that we dedicated so much time to it that I want it to be read more. Um, yeah. Because I'm so, yeah, I'm also so proud of these books, of the Western, that uh, they have such a sweeping romance while also having an amazing story in the background. But I would always ask when people say, uh, what should I read first? Uh, what do you like? Yeah. Because if you like paranormal, I'm going to say Labyrinth and the Beast, which is time travel and the take on Beauty and the Beast. But if you say you like contemporary, I might say Guns and Boys, which is our biggest mafia series, which I'm also extremely proud of because it spans 11 books. And that's quite unusual for a one couple kind of story. So, uh, also yeah. many years. In many couple. years, seven mm-hmm. years within the within the uh, whole story uh, for the couple. So I would always kind of first ask, what do people like? Because we have so many books. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can recommend all over the spectrum. And oftentimes I'll ask, oh, what tropes do you like? You like age gap? You like size difference? I have, I can tell you for most of them, just no, no male pregnancy and we're good. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Forgive and me no if I just covers. missed it. No one covers yet. <laughs> but what is what is the title of the the western? The western. Which one? It's "Dig to Graves" is the name of the series, and book one is uh, "The Man Who Loved Cole Flores," and book two is "The Man Who Hated Ned O'Leary." <laughs> awesome. Yeah, and I'll add an extra plug for Laurent and the Beast because I love that book. So. Oh, wow, thank you. <laughs> so it's a one and of my it was favorites. Another one of those projects that we put off for four years Mm -hmm. from coming up with it and hesitated uh, starting on it because oh there's so many genres mixed up and we have to write what what sells better for us Mm -hmm. uh, because you know we love all our projects but we do know which will sell more i usually and then lauren and the beast completely blew up even though we were expecting it to be you know kind of on the mediocre side because people uh, don't didn't know us for paranormals so i was like so excited to be able to then venture into writing a whole series about that club it's and and 
it was actually an interesting series as well because it was inspired by a course we took on mm. uh, gothic novels. So we kind of in- infused each of those books with classic themes. So you had one that's more inspired by uh, <coughs> Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And you had, you know, the um, Laurent and the Beast is Beauty and the Beast inspired. But for us, it was that's also very much Jane Eyre. Jane Eyre inspired. You know, a young man cap- coming into uh, this uh, massive manor. And we kind of uh, really infused the whole series with gothic themes. So everything is dark, wet, and, <laughs> and, <laughs> and mossy, and uh, uh, there's demons and mirrors. Shadows. And shadows in every corner. Mm. So yeah, that was uh, a really fun exercise mm-hmm. as well for us as writers. Because we generally it. like to swap things up. We don't like to do the same thing all the time. Mm-hmm. Even in our process, we keep... Uh, changing things and yeah. um, sometimes it goes uh, not according to what we want and sometimes yeah. it does that's amazing yeah you really never know what's going to resonate with people I no. I when I wrote my dinosaur shifters I wrote that for me because I thought it was fun and then that's the one that everybody likes me for and I'm like Broke really yeah. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. okay cool yeah, yeah so I, I get it <laughs> Yeah, maybe there's a lesson to be learned there. Yeah, just go with your, like you said, go with your heart. Just kind of let your muse take the wheel sometimes and it can pay off. Yes, because I feel if you push uh, doing uh, doing something that doesn't give you pleasure, you you never have any guarantees that it's gonna. Uh, give I was you gonna say you, you, you still don't know if it's gonna if it's gonna be um, a, a bestseller. Let's but say. if you, you like can, it, you can you're at least it. gonna enjoy yourself. Yeah, but you're spending two months minimum with that book. Might as well enjoy yourself. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yeah. Uh, I see that you guys also have a Patreon. Do you want to plug that? Yes. Yes, um, we have uh, a Patreon at patreon.com slash kamerican. And uh, we will publish the fantasy book there. When, we do when flash we, fiction. Yes. We, pro, uh, we give uh, free we audio polls. codes. Uh, we, um, we, we give well, uh, advanced uh, review copies on there. There's merch. And then starting next year, once we write it, we will be publishing the fantasy story on our Patreon. Again, because fantasy can be so niche and you never know. You, it might be the one that, you know, breaks out, but it might not be. But we still want to write it. So it's a nice place where we can mm-hmm. hopefully get some support for, for these more niche projects. And that's, that's kind of what we do we uh, also, on our Patreon. We also use that uh, Patreon um, to finance the Guns N' Boys audiobooks yes. because... Um, they are not our most popular title, let's say, but we very much want it, to complete It's like people the who love versions. them, love them. Mm-hmm. But people tend to also be hesitant to start an 11-book series. And this is something we only learned uh, years into our careers, but we didn't give up on the series. We just decided, well, what the hell? I love these characters. They need to get the story that they need to get. And I planned it to be a very long story of their life together uh, and the challenges they will have to face running away from the mafia, going through changes in their personal life. And it had to be uh, Mm. the way it had to be. And so I really, sometimes I'm really sad that lots of people never get to see book 11, which I feel is like the pinnacle. And we've learned to become better writers along the way. Mm. So some people might bounce off book one, Mm And they'll never see the amazing storylines we did in the later books. Yes, we are very proud of this series especially, I guess, because those characters were with us the longest. We wrote um, a large chunk of their story in Polish first, Mm -hmm. then wrote the whole thing in English again. Um, As a complete rewrite, we couldn't just translate it because we've learned so much as uh, Mm -hmm. writers by then that we had to redo things and... uh, Translating just wasn't an option. We had to change things up. And uh, to see those characters grow to like who they became later, they just stayed with us forever. And uh, anytime I get a chance, I will kind of plug that series. <laughs> we just had a Christmas book out. Ah, yes. <laughs> it yes. came out uh, uh, on the 1st. And um, it's a murder husband's kind of book uh, about... Uh, a hitman who is feeling very lonely around Christmas time 
and uh, he happens to pick up a letter that someone dropped in the street dropped in the street and it's written in this very angry script and um, it basically says that all they want for Christmas is revenge on the people who um, hurt them basically and, and then this hitman decides wow this is a job for me <laughs> 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 because he generally picks up uh, jobs uh, based on revenge and it's mm-hmm. not like just things that you would think make sense like uh, you know kill for a kill or something he, he will pick up jobs on uh, you know Petty cheating reasons. husbands or <laughs> killed animals or things like that so it's it's very morally gray um, but that's the premise and then they get together over the Christmas time with, the, mm-hmm. with, the, with this guy who wrote this letter and uh, he gets to have his revenge and the killer gets to have his Christmas and it's it's, uh, it's all good uh, crazy <laughs> that's what it sounds so wholesome of, uh, murder and Christmas, Christmas. dates <laughs> yes and it's Love it. very cute but also very murderous and um, the p- people who read it already seem to like it so awesome <laughs> Well, this episode is scheduled to be our first of the new year. It'll come out on Uh January 5th. So if you're listening and you're and you're in it. Yeah, (laughs) right. Exactly. And you're still feeling the Christmas spirit. Go get it or go get it now and save it for next year. You can can always save it to read it. Perfect. Uh, But yeah, go go grab that. That sounds really cool and fun and scary. (laughs) That's that's the like secret sauce of Kay American, I think. Right. Yeah. It was fun to write. (laughs) It's both cute and gory. So I I, I love how that came out. (laughs) Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time to chat with us and for giving us this time. I know it's late where you guys are. So it's not too bad. Okay, good. (laughs) Thank you so much to both Kat and Ignis for chatting with us. It was great to get to know them. Mm -hmm. Um, Having worked with them the one time and chatted here and there, like... Yeah, I love that. I love that we do that and we get to to meet new people. Yeah, I was happy to talk to new them again. Old people. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I hadn't <laughs> talked to them in years, so it's just like it was just so happy. I was so happy to be able to talk to them face to face again because like I ping them online a couple of times, like in passing on comments and mm-hmm. stuff. But we don't get to talk like yeah. that, and they're just fun. I really love yeah. them. So, yeah. so uh, you will be able to find all of their contact information in the show notes for this episode, as well as all of our contact information. And we mm-hmm. do hope you reach out. Uh, and as we have mentioned before, we now have four audiobooks available through our online store, hoofandfangpodcast.com. Yep. Click on the store. Uh, and our Patreon is available to you uh, at the dear reader or dear listener level. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've got uh, Three Meant to Be by M.N. Bennett coming up in January. Mm-hmm. So all good things coming your way. We will be back next week with our regular Friday episode. Uh, and if you're in our Patreon, you already know that we just completed the uh 13th book in the animorph series yes and there have been some detours in there as well so Mm -hmm. we're like 16 17 books in there too so like go over check that out there's so much stuff to catch up on if you haven't joined the patreon yeah you guys need to come freak out with us because i'm like fangirling pretty hard now so (laughs) yeah yeah so meet us over there at uh, patreon.com forward slash hoof and fang Uh, Yeah, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Yeah. And we'll be back next week. See you then. Bye. Bye.